Hey guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop. And I've been getting a lot of questions on maintenance on our snappers. How much grease do we put in them? Where do we put it? And how often to do it? Well, we're going to go over that today. I'm going to show you some spots that you're going to want to grease. What the book says once a year. I'm going to show you some spots that I grease once a month. And I'm going to show you a spot that I never grease. And I'll tell you why when we get to that point. To start off, we have the differential. Now, this is a differential cover. Uh, if you're new to my channel, I've tore apart three of these things. Two of them were for parts. My old 25 inch snapper that I've had for, oh my goodness, 27 years. This is what's left to it. I've tore it apart and I've made a, uh, a model out of it. Now this is a cutaway view. If you notice, the fenders have been cut away so you can see into the drive disc and the clutch disc. The chain case has been cut away so you can see inside of it and you can see the chain and the gears. The differential has been cut. This fender has been cut away so you can actually see in the differential and actually see it work. This is a working model that I have a electric motor mounted on. So if you're having issues with yours and you want to see how to fix something or how to check something or just you want to understand how this thing actually works a little better, I can run this one and you can watch it work. Well, if I take it out of neutral, you can. Let's try that. You can see the differential right now is not working because it thinks we're going straight across our yard. But once you start to turn, the differential will kick in. It'll kick this tire out and it'll put all the power to this tire. And you can see how the differential gears work to do that. That's why I built this. Uh, it was kind of fun to do, but mostly I did it for you guys so you can understand something if you're having problems with it. Now to get back to greasing this thing. Uh, I called, I don't know if I mentioned it, I called uh, my dealer and he's got a double lot snapper grease they call it grease for seventeen dollars excuse me let me look thirteen dollars and seventeen cents uh i asked him how can you sell it so cheap i've had a guy told me it was uh 49.95 he said well it's not really snapper grease it's an aftermarket product they're selling cheaper <clears throat> What it consists of, I don't know. I've never seen it. He's, I asked him, I said, well, isn't it about the same as the 8090 gear lube? And he said, oh, no, it's a lot thicker than that. Well, it is thick. And if you've ever tore one of these things apart to work on them, you'd know it. Because this will be packed full of black, gooey grease. And you can't dump it out. I use gear lube because when I go to fill this, I not only fill it, I drain it. You pull these two plugs out and you lay it back down, this stuff will run right out because it's thin enough. If it's a warm summer day, I wouldn't try it in the winter, but it'll run out and then I can put new stuff in. It doesn't all run out because when this is laying down on its wheels, there's about a half inch here where it's going to stay in there. You can't get it all out unless you crack this apart 
break the seal and then it'll all come out. But I fill this and the book tells you, you take these two plugs out and you start squirting your grease in or your gear lube, whatever you want to use, and it will start filling this up. When it gets to this hole, it'll start running out. That's when you snap this plug in and you stop. I have squirted in about another half to another cup of gear lube in mine. And I do that because you get that extra volume in there <clears throat> when this thing is laying down, it helps lubricate this bushing. And that's all these are. Snapper calls these things bearings. Don't be confused, they are not bearings. The commercial models do have bearings in them. But all these residential machines we have, that is a brass bushing and it needs to be lubricated. Outside here is a lip seal that seals all this gear lube or grease, whatever you're using, into the differential. If you're noticing a bunch of grease and black stuff on the inside of your tire, your lip seal needs to be replaced. And normally, the only way your lip seal gets bad is if your bushing is bad. That lets your axle go up and it wears out the lip seal. Now this side for this bushing, <clears throat> I grease this once a month and I put four or five squirts in it. I make sure there's a good amount of grease in there. And when I'm greasing that, I'll put it in neutral and I'll turn the axle. I want to make sure this is getting all the way around. The other place I grease once a month is up here on the shifter. I've had guys get a hold of me and say, hey, I bought this used snapper and I can't shift it. It froze right up. Well, this is your problem. Uh, you'll have to disassemble this, clean it, buff all the rust off, and then keep it greased. You won't have any more issues. Another spot that I lubricate is right here where this shifter, there's a thrust washer in there because there's a lot of spring pressure on this. And I'll squirt that every time I think about it. I might do it every time I use the machine. I'll, I'll drip some oil on that to help that turn without wearing that thrust washer out. Because this one was repaired. It went through the thrust washer and started eating into this case. So when I had it tore apart, I welded up the uh, hole that it had wore in there, ground it down flat, and put it back together. Now your chain case. Let me grab this one. You can't see the plug in this one because that's the portion I cut away. This only has one plug in it. You pull that plug out and you put the grease in there until it comes up to the bottom of this hole and then you snap the plug back in. That's supposed to be full. And I do the same thing. I pull all these plugs out. I'll lay down some cardboard and I'll lay it back down and I'll let it all run out. And when it's done dripping, it got as much out as I can of the old stuff. I fill it up with new stuff. Now if you use a snapper double aught grease, I don't think it's going to come out when you lay this thing back down. That stuff is too thick and by the time you get around to doing it, it's, it's going to be old and pretty much solidified. Uh, 8090 gear lube doesn't do that. It's just a real heavy oil and it always seems to come out when I lay it down. Now there's some other points you might want to put a little oil on. Uh, one is these two points here where your yoke pivots. There's a little plastic or nylon uh, spacer or washer there. You're going to want to put something on there to keep that lubricated because I have seen them wear to the point where it cuts them right in half and you have to replace them. Back inside here on the bottom of your rear case 
there is a bracket welded in with a slot in it. And when you work your yoke, there's an arm with a square plastic or nylon, uh, I don't know what they call it to tell you the truth, but that slides up and down in that slot. Put a little grease on that. This uh, hex shaft, I've had people say that, uh, oh, we have problems. I can't shift it in reverse. Your shaft is the problem. Take your boot off, shift it in fifth gear, get this thing all the way over there, and you're going to probably find this is just caked up with dirt. I don't know how it gets in there. You may have a hole in your boot, uh, or it just it finds its way in. And this will just be caked with stuff, and that's why it's not shifting good. So I pull the boot this way, I'll clean this side off, I'll pull the boot this way, clean the other side, I'll take my grease gun and I'll squirt grease all over this, and then I'll smear it around with my hand. Hook your boot back up, shift it into reverse, do the same thing on the other side. You will be amazed how much easier this thing's going to shift once you do that. Now, on the part that you don't want to grease, let me show you what that is. <laughs> okay, here's your spindle. I've had a couple, few questions on this. Um, on how to get it apart, get it off. I have videos on how to do that. Uh, you just, you'll just have to back up and, and look at them. They're mostly all in the videos. It's how to uh, rebuild a drivetrain, one through seven. It's all in them. But these spindles have a grease fitting on them. I never grease them. The bearings today are made and they are permanently lubricated for the life of the bearing. You don't have to mess with lubricating them. These bearings that I bought for my spindles when I rebuild them, they are shielded on both sides. Some bearings are not. This is an open side. This is a shielded side. These bearings you do not want to use. And I'll show you why. These are not only shielded on both sides, they are sealed. And if you look close, you'll see a little black right inside between the inner race and that shield. That is a rubber seal. That keeps everything out. How long does that seal actually hold up with this thing spinning? I don't know. They're not that much more money uh, to get a sealed one. If you don't want to get the sealed one, make sure you get them uh, shielded on both sides. This is some of these older machines have bearings in them like this. <clears throat> and you have one on the bottom with the open side up into this cavity. This is just a piece of pipe they've machined for this bearing to fit into. You'll have one in the top facing down. Now the only way you can grease this is if you pump grease into this grease fitting and fill this entire cavity full of grease. Now five or six or seven years down the road the grease in this cavity is gonna harden up. It's gonna turn into almost like paste. Okay now I want to grease my bearings. So now I'm going to pump some grease in here. The new grease you're pumping in is not going to make it to the bearings. What you're going to do is you're going to force that old dried up grease into your bearing and it's going to destroy it. These are bearings, they're lubricated at the factory and that's all they ever need. Now if you want to try and grease these, What's going to happen? Okay, I'm going to pump grease down here and it's going to force it into the bearing. Probably not. Because if you look underneath here, 
We'll take the nut off. We'll take your uh, big pulley off. We'll take your brake drum off. And underneath there, you've got a vent hole. So where do you think the grease is going to go that you're pumping into this thing? Are you going to force it into that bearing? Like this one that's sealed? No. It's just going to come squirting out of that hole and you're, do it, you're wasting your grease. Will it end up in this one that's open? Probably not. You're going to push in all that old stuff and it's going to ruin the bearing. Personally, I put them in, I leave them alone. They'll run for years just the way the factory is, has made them. <clears throat> if your bearing is making noise, if it's howling, vibrating, it's way too late to grease it anyway. So don't worry about it. Now another thing on here, I've had a viewer say that, a couple of them, that they bought new spindles. Now when you pull this spindle out of your machine, they're relatively easy to get out. Uh, I take the deck right off my machine, I bring it in here, I throw it on the bench. Flip it upside down. First thing I do is I take the blade off. These are two three-quarter inch bolts with three-quarter inch nuts. Two wrenches, pop the blade off. Then I take this nut off. These are self-locking. Best way to get them off is an impact. If you don't have one, put a wrench on it. I hit it with a rubber mallet and spin it off. Then you're going to want to take this off. This is your blade bar. When this thing is upside down, I grab onto this pulley. It's the last thing I take off. I hang onto this pulley and I beat this with a rubber hammer and pop it loose and it unscrews. It's a right hand thread, just like the nut. <coughs> then there's a big washer under here you can take off. Don't lose that. Because the guy bought a mower off Craigslist and the uh, guy said it makes a terrible racket. The blade mount was rubbing on the bottom of the spindle. He said it didn't do that until, <clears throat> until, I, excuse me, until I put new bearings in it. He forgot to put that washer in there. And this blade mount was mounted right down on the top of the spindle and just making a horrendous noise. He bought this machine. He took it apart and put a washer in there. He got a heck of a deal. <coughs> now, once you get that off, there's three bolts through the bottom of the deck that holds the spindle in. Then I take the top apart. I hang on to the pulley, put a wrench on here, whack it with a rubber mallet, spin it loose. Then you take, uh, take the pulley off. Your brake drum will come off. There's three washers under here. You got to have them up there, otherwise when you put this on, this is going to do the same thing. It's going to rub on the top of this and bind it up. You take these two snap rings off, this thing will slide right out the bottom. <clears throat> now if, you, if you're buying a new spindle, this is going to be all dirty. Don't lose this part. This is what was wrong with mine when I bought it. When I was mowing with it, the blade underneath was deflecting this way as I hit something <coughs> and it was hitting the mower deck. Sparks was coming out and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it until I finally I brought it in here and tore it apart and whoever put the spindle in because it was black, it was not the original spindle because it would have been painted red they forgot to put this on. And this is just, it kind of reminds you of a piece of crinkled up ribbon. Why they use this, I don't know. If they would not have machined this groove in here, they wouldn't have needed this. Uh, I, I don't know, I'd have to ask them why they do it, I guess. So if you're gonna replace your spindle, Make sure you don't throw that away because it's really easy to miss 
when this is all dirty. Got any more questions? Shoot them on over here. If it's about this, <clears throat> the spindle, anything, let me know. Be more than happy to help you out. Now, <clears throat> I'm helping you. You can help someone else. When you Google fixing my snapper, some computer someplace on these massive mainframes that are holding all this information picks videos that have the most subscribers, the most thumbs up, and the most views. I have over 35,000 views on my videos. I have over 400 emails that I have received and answered since I've started this. But that computer is going to pick the ones with the most subscribed people and the most thumbs up. That helps. So if you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Give them a thumbs up. So when someone else is searching and looking for help, these videos will be shot over there and they can use them. <clears throat> there are a lot of videos out there. And believe me, when I first started this, I've been watching. And there's a lot of them out there that ain't even worth looking at. Because they, <laughs> they don't tell you a thing. So help out someone else by subscribing. It's free. It may ask you to set up a email account. And the only reason they do that is when you bring up a video, it'll have a word that says subscribe. You touch that word. Now you're subscribed to it. Next to that word is a little bell. If you touch that bell, every time I put a video on, you will be notified. A little message will pop up and tell you Jim's Fix-It Shop has uploaded a new video. Now if you've got your snapper fixed and you're done with it, don't touch the bell. It won't bother you. But if I'm putting videos on that you want to see, and I have a lot of guys that watch every one of them, all you have to do is touch that bell and you'll be notified. So I guess that's it. If you need any help, if you have any questions at all, let me know. Put them in the description below. I'll be notified that way. Or just send me an email to jimsfixitshop at gmail.com. Don't put apostrophe on Jim's because them tend to screw up computers. <clears throat> and I'll answer you. So I guess until next time, work safe, have fun, and... I'll be talking to you soon.